Okay, let's continue on where we have the graph of a function and we're being asked some questions. This is actually something that students in the past have really struggled with, sort of interpreting functions on a graph. And that's why I'm taking this extra time to really try and explain what kinds of things we're looking at when we look at the graph of a function and what kind of questions are being asked and how to understand those questions. So now on the end of the previous video, I really, really took some time trying to explain how we came up with these answers. And of course the answers were all intervals. Hopefully you followed that. And now I'm going to go a little faster. So here's a new graph. I'll go and ask a few questions. Maybe if you want to, you can always pause the video and try and answer the question yourself. And then when I give the answer, you can see if, if um, you have the same answer as me. Hopefully my answer is correct and I don't make a mistake or goof up. So hopefully, also I apologize in advance, sometimes I may be writing and I'm off the screen or it's sort of hard because I got the graph here and I'm trying to write down here and go back and forth. So well, actually what I could do, maybe I will, is maybe I'll try and this part of the graph, there's really nothing going on here. Maybe I can try and actually the first few questions write it here. So maybe I won't have that problem to start with. So let's do that. How about I start with, um, once again, pretty basic question, pretty simple question. There's more involved than it looks like, but what if I just ask this question, where is f of x greater than eight? So once again, there's a lot implied in this question. If I wanted to expand it, I would say for what values of x is the function greater than eight? Once again, this graph represents the function. The value of the function is the vertical up and down. So I'm gonna go and figure out where is the function eight. If you look at this scale here, eight is right here. So I'm gonna look at my graph and say, where is this graph greater than eight? Well, here, it's actually the function's negative. Here it gets positive, but never gets as high as eight. Here it goes down again, it goes negative, it comes back up. And finally, right here is where the function is finally greater than eight. And of course, like I said before, these graphs, we assume continue on and on. So in a sense, this is my solution. This part of the graph is the answer to my question and only this part, because this is the only part of the graph where the function is greater than eight. So then what are the values of X for this part of the graph? Well, if you look, now, once again, you have to check your scale because one is here, two, three. This point right here is like X is three, the function is eight. So as an interval, the solution, the solution is gonna be, now it says greater than eight, so I don't include the point, so I just put three. And now, What's the largest value of X for this part of the graph? Well, since this thing goes on forever, although it's going pretty high, it's still, it's still moving to the right some. So you say it eventually, <coughs> we'll get to infinity. So where is the function greater than eight? Well, the function when X is greater than three to infinity. All right, I'm starting to cough so I can keep my voice in shape. All right, here's another question. Where 
is a function less than or equal to minus 10. So in terms of the function, of course, the vertical axis, the function is zero here. Everything going up from the center of your graph, the function is positive. Everything below the center of the graph, the function is negative. And it's asking, so where is the function less than negative 10? Or what they're really saying is, what are the values of x where the function is less than or equal to negative 10? So here is where the function is negative 10. So I go to my, and you notice this portion of the, of the function is less than negative 10. So even though it looks like a bigger number, but once again, because it's a negative number, negative 20 is actually less than negative 10. The farther down you go, the smaller the numbers get, even though you can get tricked because it looks like a bigger number, but it's actually not. Negative 20 is a smaller number than negative 10. And if I look, then the rest of this function, once it gets larger than negative 10, it never ever drops below negative 10. So once again, it's only one part of this graph that's going to be the solution to this question. So what are the values of X? Well, this thing goes on forever. So the smallest value of X that describes this part of the function, in this case, it's gonna start at negative infinity and it's gonna go up to here. Now this point, if we look, so this is negative two, this right here is negative three. So this point here is really negative two and a half. Now, we really don't like to use mixed numbers. Negative two and a half is actually the same thing as negative five halves. So this point here is actually negative five halves, negative 10. So this is gonna be the largest value of X for this interval. So when it's gonna go from negative infinity, negative infinity up to negative five halves. I gotta be careful because you notice this one says f of x less than or equal to negative 10. So actually we want to include this point here. So in this case, I actually put a bracket. How about um, just for fun? Just to make sure you're getting all this in. How about if I say where is f of x equal to two? Now, once again, I sort of made this question up, which is probably not great. I'm gonna explain the principle of it, although I probably can't give an exact answer. You're gonna see why in a minute. Where is f of x2? So that is saying, let's go on this graph and find where on the graph the function actually equals two. So it's not an equal anymore. Where is it equal to? Well, two is right here. So you think to yourself, well, this whole line represents when the function equals two. And there are actually three points on the graph where the function equals two. This one I know, it's x equals zero. But if you look closely, it's pretty close to being right here, but its I don't think it is quite. So I really don't know what this value of x is here. 
and I don't know what the value of X is here. So really I can't, I sort of can't, I know one answer is zero, but the other two, if I look at the graph, I can't be very precise, but it's okay because we talked through it and hopefully you, you see the difference between now these <clears throat> inequalities and these points. Matter of fact, just for fun, I could have said, <clears throat> what if I ask this, f of zero equals what? This means go on the graph and find where on the graph x equals zero. Well, here's my x-axis, zero's right here. Here's the point on the graph where x equals zero. And the function actually equals two. I could have said, um, F of negative two equals what? What do you do? I'm looking for the value of the function when x is negative two. Here's negative two on my x-axis. So I go down to my graph, it looks like this point right here. And it looks like that point there is negative two, negative two. Right, because it's negative two, negative four. So this is, the answer should be negative two. Couple more. Where is f of x greater than negative 10? So now we're back to uh, inequality, which is my answer is going to be an interval. So we're saying, okay, what are the values of x where the function is greater than negative 10? So once again, where is negative 10 on my function? Negative 10 is along here. So here's my function. So all this part, it's less than negative 10. I'm looking for where is it greater than negative 10. So starting here, starting when x is negative 5 halves or x is negative 2 and a half. Here, the function is greater than negative 10 greater than, it's actually a positive number, it comes here and it, here the function goes negative again, but it's still greater than negative 10. And then it turns around and keeps going up. So really the solution to this question, where is the function greater than negative 10? You start here and it's the whole rest of this graph, the whole rest of this function is always going to be greater than negative 10. So we're gonna start here and we have to write the interval for the values of X in this part of the graph. So it looks like we start at negative five halves and up here, because it keeps going on, whoops, keeps going on negative five halves to infinity. Last one for this graph, how about where is f of x greater than or equal to negative two? Actually, I lied, I'm gonna ask another question. Well, no, I'm not. This will be it for this one. Where is f of x greater than or equal to negative two? Hopefully you're getting this down by now. So we're gonna go, we're looking for the values of X where the function is equal to negative two. So let's go find out where on this graph is the function negative two. Looks like, well, here's my negative two line on the vertical axis. So you see what's interesting is when I start here on the left, 
I'm looking for greater than negative two. So here it's less than negative two. But as soon as I get to this point here, then all of a sudden my function is greater than negative two. So this is all going to be my solution. All of this, because as I'm going along here, this function is all greater than negative two. But then I get to here, and what happens? All of a sudden my function drops below negative two. So once again, this is one of those where here is what I've circled is my solution, because this is where the function is greater than negative two. Here I have to stop because now it's less than negative two, but then I get to right here and once I get past x equals two, what happens to my function? Once again, it's greater than negative two. So then here is a second interval. That would be a solution. It's almost like it starts here and you have a gap here where the function goes less than negative two, but then it turns around and starting here again, the function is greater than negative two. So there's gonna be two intervals. The first interval starts at negative two when X is negative two. This right here is one. So from negative two to one, Oh, let's be careful now. See, sometimes even I forget. It says greater than or equal to negative two. So actually these two points here, I actually need to include them. Because those, the actual points, the endpoints are part of the solution since it's greater than or equal to. And then I pick up here again, starts again and I include two, so a bracket with two, and then it goes off to infinity. Now infinity, of course, is always a parenthesis. So that should be the solution to that question. All right, a couple more, and hopefully, We'll have a really good understanding. This one's a parabola, more of a basic graph. Once again, I guess I can sort of mark the axes. Actually here, well, I thought I had two questions, but I actually have more than that. So let's um, see if I can fit them in down here. where it's f of x greater or equal to zero. And you know what? I meant to mention this before, but sometimes they will write a question like this. Well, let me do this, because I want to make this point here. Let me, let me change my first question. How about I say, where is, f of x greater than zero. Now here's the second way to ask the same question, which you will see in problems. That's why I want to make you aware of it. Sometimes I'll say, where is f of x positive? So do you see why this is where you're asking the same question? Where is f of x greater than zero? You're saying what are the values of x that cause the function to be greater than zero? Well, what do we call all the numbers that are greater than zero? We call them positive numbers. So if they say, if the question is where is f of x positive, in your head you could be saying, well, basically that means 
they're asking me, where is the function greater than zero? So these are really identical questions. So we go to our function, the graph of our function, and we say, where is this function, this graph, greater than zero? Once again, the function is the vertical axis. So the function is zero right here. So really, I'm looking at what part of the graph is going to be above. In this case, it's my x-axis since the the function equals zero. It's the same as the x-axis. So basically, it's like here and here. So there's two parts of the graph where the function is positive or where the function is greater than zero. So the answer would be this first interval. Once again, smallest value, this goes on forever. Negative infinity to negative two. And negative two has a parenthesis because we're not going to include this point. The question is, where is f of x greater than zero or positive? At this point right here, actually f of x is zero. So I don't want to include the negative two. And then pick up here. This is three. Once again, I don't include the three. And it goes up actually to infinity. Now let's go back and Where is f of x less than zero? You know what? I could also, well, I keep saying f, sorry. Where is, wow, I really messed up. Where is f of x less than zero? Where is, that's the same question as saying where is, f of x negative. What's it mean to say the function is less than zero? That means basically the function are all the negative numbers. So that's why it's the same thing as saying where is f of x negative. So I look at my function, my graph. I say what part of this graph is the function less than zero? Well, once again, in this case, the x-axis is my dividing line. So when I get to here, my function is less than zero. My function is negative, 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 until here again. So these are the two sort of values of x that divide the graph between positive and negative. So for the negative function, there's just really one interval from here to here. So the answer is starts at negative two and goes to three. Now just for fun, if I had written this, where is f of x less than or equal to zero? That is not the same question as saying, where is f of x negative? Where is f of x negative means all negative numbers. Zero is not a negative number. So if I don't include the zero, another way to restate the question is where f of x is negative. But now if I say, where is f of x less than or equal to zero, that does not mean the same thing as saying, where is the function negative? because now I'm going to include the points where the function equals zero. So I'm still going from here to here, except now I'm going to include these endpoints because when X is negative two, the function equals zero, which is part of my solution. And when X equals three, 
the function is zero, which is part of my solution. So for this one, I would say bracket negative two to three. Couple more just for fun. I'll say um, where is f of x? Um, greater than six. So that's the question. Let me hit. I'm gonna have to move, I'm gonna show you the whole graph because, so six is right here. So here's where the function is six. So we start here, when this graph starts out, the function is larger than six. So this is part of my solution if I get right to here. Because as I keep moving to the right, all of a sudden my function is less than six. So this is a solution, but not any of this. For all of this down here, the function is less than six, less than six, less than six. And finally you get to right here, and all of a sudden the function or my graph is all of a sudden greater than six. So once again, that would also be a solution. So these two intervals here are my solution. So for this one, I would say it starts at negative infinity and goes until looks like negative three with a parenthesis. Sorry. Where's my answer at? Oh. Oh, right here, sorry. Where is f of x squared in six? Negative infinity to negative three. And now this part up here starts at four and it goes to infinity. And one last one, how about Where is f of x less than or equal to negative four? So we've got to find out which part of this graph is the function less than or equal to negative four. Well, negative four is right here. So if I look, and I'm looking less than or equal to, so I come here, here's where the function is less than negative four, and it stays less than negative four until right here. So in a sense, when I when the question is where is f of x less than or equal to negative four, it's got to be this part. So x starts here, the interval. It's like negative one, and now I'm going to include the endpoints since it's less than or equal to negative one. It looks like over here it's two. So where is the function less than or equal to negative four? Well, when x is from negative one to two. All right, I actually have one more. Let's do it really quick. I really hope you're gonna hang with this. Just a couple quick ones. How about um, where is where is f of x greater than zero? I could state this another way, right? I could have said where is f of x positive. In fact, I should have done that. I will do it. Where is f x positive? 
So that way of saying, where is the function greater than zero? So here's my function. Here's my x-axis. This function starts out less negative here. It's less than zero. All of a sudden here, the function at negative two, the function is zero. And as you move past negative two, we have a positive function, but then it goes back to zero here. So where is f of x positive so far? This section here now, f of x is less than zero, but then right here, it goes back up again. So the solution has two intervals. This first interval starts at negative two and goes to zero. Then it picks up again at one and goes to infinity. How about Where is f of x less than or equal to seven? Last question. So my function, I'm going to figure out where, what part of this function, what part of this graph is a less than zero. Well, seven is right here. So it looks like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't mean seven, it's mean eight. Because actually I want to do this point right here. This is the transition point. All this part of the graph is where the function is greater than eight, but down here, it's less than eight. And the question is, where is the function less than or equal to eight? Or we could say, what are the values of x where the function is less than or equal to eight? So here it's less than or equal to eight. All this down here, down here, here it's negative, positive, but this whole, actually, this is the part that's excluded. The rest of this graph is less than or equal to eight. So an interval, you always start the lowest, the smallest value of X, since this goes on forever, starts at negative infinity, and it goes up until when x is two, but we want to include when the function equals eight. So we put a bracket there. All right, lots of examples. Hopefully now you have a pretty good grasp of when we're asking questions about these functions in a graphical form. You know what's going on. You can give the intervals. You understand how to interpret what you're being asked about.